loving one another. What would happen if every single one of us were to just unconditionally love everyone around us the way Christ loves us? And I want to tell you, there's a difference between no conditions, without conditions, and without standards. There's a difference. You can love without conditions and still have standards. See, when we don't understand the difference, you just think you just love everybody no matter what, and you just whatever they want to do, and you don't care. But I love my children unconditionally. You know who has more standards than anyone else in my life? My children. They have more standards, and yet my love for them is more unconditional than anyone else's. We can still love with standards. Christ has a standard. But just because we have standards doesn't mean we get to be ugly about it. So when pandemic hit, Hawaii, just like everywhere else, no one was allowed to have Sunday morning services for about three months. We were already on this journey where we had gone from being God's house, which was a normal church, to the movement. And we were beginning a three-year plan to remove one Sunday a month for three years until we were down to one and replacing each one with house church. We started 2020 and we were ready to do it. It was scary and terrifying, let me tell you. But we decided for us, we were going to throw out everything else. And the only blueprint we would have was if the Axe Church was birthed in 21st century America, what would it look like? What should it look like? What should it be like? We knew we couldn't just throw out Sunday morning services. We had to gradually teach on it, preach on it, share on it, build our house churches. Our house churches are not built on gatherings, even though we do gather. All of our house churches, on Maui alone, we have eight house churches, and they all gather different days. They gather weekly, some on Wednesdays, some on Tuesdays, some on Sundays. Some on and they have their own pastors. And they're not graded on the number of gatherings they have. Pastors, our house church pastors are, are held accountable to how much contact they have with each member of their community. And in our system, every person who's a part of the movement will be contacted in some way. It could be an Instagram comment, could be a phone call, could be face-to-face -face interaction, dinner, whatever. No less than six times a month. Not all in-your-face dinners or anything like that, but group chats, group texts. How are you doing? Just want to check in on you. We try to keep it as organic as possible. Then the quarantine hit and no one could have Sunday morning services. While every other church and pastor was emailing me and calling me, trying to get me to get the legislation changed, I went, this was the best thing that ever happened to us. <laughs> I was going to take three years to do this. I mean... Don't get, me, don't, don't get me wrong, the reason is awful. Don't get me wrong, the reason is awful. But out of all the awful results, for us, God took something very bad and used it to fast track a three-year process into three months. Since we stopped doing Sunday mornings altogether, we just decided we would never just not do it. We just wouldn't pick it up after that. A lot of people left. 
spiritual warfare started happening like crazy. I'll be honest with you, I had a few moments where I sat down with my leadership council and said, are we sure we're doing the right thing? And God said, no, Chris, don't get distracted by the fight. You just keep doing the work. So we did. We let important leaders leave. We didn't get mad. We didn't talk trash about them. We said, cool. We know who we're called to be. And, and if you don't feel called to be that, that's okay. That's okay. So we started doing Zoom house church, and we did smaller house church clusters. We had house churches where if we, you couldn't have more than 10 people in a house at one time, then some of our bigger house churches would, would have mini gatherings. Because they're just gatherings, right? And we wanted to make sure that everyone's taken care of. I started three businesses. I own three businesses now. Mo uh, many of our leaders now started their own businesses. Taking ourselves off of the church. And then we got rid of all of the other stuff. We just started renting out this warehouse space. Once a month, first Saturday night of the month, where we have a gathering of all of our house churches on Maui together. Other ones, they, they, do it on, they do it differently. Some do it on Sundays. Some do it whatever. But it's just once a month the house churches get together to worship together. I have people ask me, do you even have a church anymore? I'm like, well, if you ask me that question, that means maybe you don't know what the church is. Let me tell you the coolest part about it all. Something that's very important to my heart. It's in our core values. All of a sudden, we found ourselves going from a very large overhead to a very small overhead. So you know what we started doing? And we still do today? We take care of every member of the movement. Not just on Maui, but now, around the world. Because we have exploded in the last 18 months. I'm out here for five weeks right now because I'm visiting eight different cities. Where I'm meeting house church pastors. People I've never met before. Part of a movement that we started. That I don't, I, I've seen on Zoom. Never even met. I went to a house church on Maui. I just rotate myself around house churches. Let me tell you, y'all, it's great. I go back to preach, to preach the, the last gathering in December. Counting that one, I will have preached a total of five times for the Maui movement. <laughs> and we didn't fall apart. People are going pagan on us. It's growing. I went to a house church community, Diane's house church community actually, earlier in the year, and a young lady comes right up to me, and she says, is this your first time to the movement? So I just looked at her, I was like, yeah. And she goes, let me tell you something. I've been coming for two months now, and I have grown more, felt more like I'm loved and a part of a family, I've, felt, I've grown more in the last two months than I've grown in the first 20 years of my life wow. in church. I'm accepted. We don't just meet. This is just how we meet. We meet every month, but this is not our house church. Our house church is the community. We always get together. We're always going out to for coffee together. We do life with each other, and, and, and I just know that if you give it a chance, enthusiasm it's amazing how quickly you can build if everyone is on board but if we're all distracted by our individual fights if we're all fighting our individual battles 
and not listening to our Nehemiahs. And building the kingdom together. We will get tired. We'll get burnt out. We'll barely hang on. And spend our entire lives fighting. 